Good evening. Experts are tonight divided over claims by two men from Hampshire that they're responsible for the South's famous crop circles. Dave Chorley and Doug Bauer say they created the strange patterns with nothing more than a wooden board and a length of rope. The men decided to reveal their hoax when they heard the government was planning to finance research into the circles. But some scientists remain convinced the circles are not man-made. I shall be talking to one such expert in just a moment. But first, this report from Graham Bowd. If their story is true, Dave Chorley and Doug Bauer are probably the most successful hoaxers of all time. The pair, who both live in Southampton, claim to have made more than 200 corn circles throughout the south of England. According to them, the hoax began as a bit of harmless fun 13 years ago. Since then, the patterns have become more elaborate. Many thought they were made by alien spacecraft. Some scientists have devoted their life's work to the search for a natural explanation. Others have written best-selling books on the subject. Mr Chorley and Mr Bauer say everyone was conned. And the newspaper which published their story says it spent a week verifying their claims. For the first three years, nothing happened at all. And we realised that we were putting them in fields that uh, the public couldn't see. And uh, we then had to find a slope or, or a dip in the, in the land that the motorists could see, you see. Well, we decided on the um, punch bowl, the cheese foot head on the Petersfield Road. And it was only a few hours before the first reports were coming through about the circle that was found in the punch bowl at cheese foot head. The men are scornful of the self-styled experts who've camped out at known circle sites in the hope of filming the unexplained phenomenon. I can't understand anybody of that intelligence walking and making something of flattened corn and shapes in cornfields, quite honestly. Had it been us ordinary laymen and gone, I think we'd have sussed it out within a year. The men say they planned their designs with geometric precision. Today in a cornfield near Chichester, they set out to show how they did it, carrying the tools they've used for 13 years. Watched this time by the world's press, the Japanese are especially curious about this strange art form. Mr Chorley and Mr Bauer went to work spiralling outwards to make their crop circle. The secret, they say, is flattening the corn halfway up the stem, which gives a different effect to merely trampling on it. Working by day was a luxury for them. Normally they did it by the dead of night. Next day they returned to join the experts. We used to infiltrate their ranks when they came up to look at the circles that we'd done. We came up the next night and mixed in with them. And uh, listening into all their conversations to what their next move was going to be, such as putting people on and spotting and all this sort of thing. And um, we managed to glean a bit of information that way, but um, we could see that they were expecting something bigger all the time. And when you get out in one of these fields at midnight or two in the morning, we would ra I'd rather be out in one of these fields and have a week away in the south of France or something, because anyone that's not been in one at midnight in an English countryside with the moon up, and you're doing it, a few beers and a couple of... Cheese rolls, absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. But the circle gurus are not so easily put off. Colin Andrews, who studied them for years, was convinced that this was not like the others. And straight away we can see this is everything we could ever see with a hoax. The plants are broken, they are rough, the grain is on the floor, there's no symmetry here whatsoever. It's extremely ragged, extremely ragged and it is obviously a hoax. So is it a hoax or an unexplained phenomenon? It seems tonight that the issue is far from settled. One thing's sure, there won't be many more crop circles this year. Almost all the corn has been harvested. This final circle, if it is to be that, lacks the precision of many of the others. It looks as if the controversy is far from over. Graham Bowd, Coast to Coast, Sussex. Well, back from watching that demonstration, corn circle expert Patrick Delgado from Alsford in Hampshire. Mr Delgado, you are not convinced then by the hoaxes? No, I'm not, except uh, I'm convinced that it's a hoax. Is there no way at all, deep in your heart of hearts, that they could be telling the truth? Uh, I'd, no, I, I can't see a way through. Um, they've endeavoured, I suppose, they've done their very best to try to convince us but it's failed. Uh, what I've seen today out of that farm, I had a look at it, and uh, along with Colin Andrews, and all I could see, I won't speak for Colin, I, I, all I could see was that the crop had been pushed down and there were things about it that uh, I could see 
that it was man-made. Now, now you see, with respect, you do have a bit of a vested interest in keeping all this going because you make money out of writing books about crop circles. Oh, you're making you? it sound very mercenary. Uh, I, it isn't that at all. Um, it's very nice to get uh, some of our money back, for instance. We've spent uh, quite a, a few thousand pounds on travelling, on buying cameras and equipment and things like that and it takes quite a long time to reimburse it. So what happens now then? Do you just dismiss the whole thing or do you take it a bit further? Oh, no, we, we're not going to dismiss it at all. I mean, uh, uh, we, we're going to press on. We know uh, where we're going. There's a conference being held tomorrow of all the, the top uh, researchers and we're going to formulate a program. There'll be a press conference, uh, we hope, the following day, that's Wednesday, and then we'll just forge ahead as we int have intended to all the time. 